Good morning and welcome to the celebration of Sung Eucharist on this the fifth Sunday in Lent, which are known as Passion Sunday, as we enter Passion Tide and the nature of our Lenten journey changes as we begin to anticipate more fully the commemorations of Holy Week and the celebration of Easter. For those joining us online, a copy of the Order of Service can be downloaded from the online Orders of Service section of the Cathedral's website. And for everyone, you'll be able to find in there not only details of today's Order of Service, but also details of the National Day of Reflection, which is this coming Tuesday, the 23rd of March. There are <coughs> two national times that it's suggested that uh, people may wish to gather their thoughts and be together in spirit, even if not in body. One of those is at 12 noon, where it's suggested that wherever we may be, we may wish to uh, hold a moment and a minute or two of silence uh, for those reflecting on those who have been affected by the past year, to reflect on a year's anniversary since the first lockdown began. The second point of gathering is at 8 o'clock in the evening, when we're encouraged to light a candle and place it in a window um, of our home or wherever else we may be. And at the back of our order of service, there are some prayer resources that you may wish to use if you're with other people within your household at that time. In addition, we'll be remembering the first anniversary of lockdown in our service of Core Evensong at 5.30, which will be uh, shared through the Facebook page as normal. Of course, entering Passion Tide, we begin to think more strongly about Holy Week, and the full details of Holy Week services are on the inside back cover of this week's order of service, and are also available on the Cathedral website. In the highlight is we're trying to maintain the full rhythm and pattern of services through Holy Week, as best we're able with the current guidance. Um, at the moment, the rub of that is that when we have the full choir present, we're not allowed to have a congregation present. But we think we've worked it through, so the only services that will affect are Tuesday Evensong, the Easter Vigil on Easter Eve, and Easter Day Evensong. All other services should be available for in-person worship here in the cathedral, and they'll take place either here in the nave or in St Hugh's Shrine, providing us with enough space, we hope, uh, to maintain social distancing make sure that it's a safe place to come and worship, as well as an appropriate one. So with all of that uh, sort of business of our life over the coming week or two past, we now turn our hearts and minds to the worship of God. And so turning to page three, we pray together. Most merciful God, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us, and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. God chose his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world. Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. <clears throat> it will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. <clears throat> 
No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from Hebrews chapter 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. 
and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who is from Bethsaida, in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who, lo those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We wish to see Jesus. It is not a difficult request, pretty simple. I'm sure the disciples heard it all the time. But this request, 
comes at a pivotal moment in our gospel story. The Passover festivities are in full swing. The air is charged with expectation, hope of liberation, and joy in celebration. The streets of Jerusalem are filled with hustle and bustle, people milling from one place to the other. Anybody who is anybody is coming into the city. Even Pontius Pilate has come from Caesarea to keep order. A poignant reminder to the children of Israel of the oppression that they are living under while celebrating this feast of their liberation out of slavery in Egypt. The tension between oppression and liberation permeates the air. This is a political powder keg, and every single year, and this year, is no exception. Because a northern wandering preacher, teacher, healer, worker of miracles has ridden into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey to throngs of people shouting Hosanna, praising God and welcoming, welcoming him as King of Israel. This is Jesus, who the Greeks wish to see. The air is already beginning to change, and the crowd is already beginning to turn. There is something coming, which Jesus warns us of. We are headed towards that cross on the hill. And in the midst of all of this, they come and say to Philip and Andrew, we wish to see Jesus. But the Jesus the Greeks want to see is not the Jesus they get. I wonder if they had any idea what they were actually asking, or how their request would echo throughout history to all of us here, who at some point in our journey have said, I wish to see Jesus. Because that will make this easier. I wish to see Jesus. The Greeks say it, we say it. But what is it we want to see? Or perhaps the correct question might be, which Jesus do we want to see? Jesus, the miracle worker, the man who walks on water. Jesus, the teacher with his message and his parables. Jesus, the healer who gives sight to the blind, makes the lame walk, and stops deaf ears. The storyteller, the prophet, the priest, the king, the resurrected Jesus. And Jesus' response that we get in the gospel this morning turns this question back on the Greeks, on the disciples, and on all of the rest of us who say we want to see him. He is happy to be seen. But as our gospel teaches us, to truly see him, you have to do so on his own terms, not on yours or ours. Jesus wants us to be prepared that to see him, to have our eyes opened to what our radical God is doing and has done, is what will happen when we see him. So in response, he lays a challenge immediately following the Greek's request. He says his hour has come. He describes himself as a grain of wheat 
falling into the ground and dying in order to bear much fruit. He invites his followers to hate their lives in this world and to keep them instead for eternal life. It is probably not the answer the Greeks expected or the answer we expect when we ask to see Jesus, but it is the answer he gives. His response is challenging and provocative. This is Jesus on his own terms. He teaches us that in order to see him, we have to see the cross. We have to see him on the cross. And we have to understand that death and seeing Jesus are intimately related. To see God and death, glory and pain, sacrifice and salvation, all at the same time. This is the challenge Jesus lays at our feet when we ask to see him. Jesus, on the cross, until the last sinner on earth is saved, because in those wounds we are found and we are made whole, and we have to see him, because when he is lifted up in glory, we are all drawn to him, every single one of us. This is difficult, because in order to do this, we have to view the cross, the cross we are so familiar with, as it is meant to be viewed, as a scandal, as heartbreaking, as completely unbelievable. I wonder whether we have got so used to the story of Jesus being killed to bring us life that we have forgotten how shocking a thing it is to say. I wonder if we are so used to images of the cross all around us, some of you like me might wear one, that we have forgotten how utterly monstrous and violent it is that anyone should die like that, never mind our God. What if we could see the events of Good Friday with fresh eyes? What if we could lose our familiarity with the cross? What would we see? We would see that God died. Do we really want to see this? Is this the Jesus we wish to see? God died. God died on a cross, in a violent death, absorbing the hatred of this world, allowing himself to be a victim, the sacrificial lamb led to slaughter, mocked, humiliated, and nailed to a cross. God died, a despised criminal, betrayed and in gruesome pain. God died to solve someone else's problem. God died for all of us. God died, refusing to give in to fear, and with words of universal love, grace, and liberation on his lips. Words that he knew had cost him his life. His ministry was spent, stood alongside those who had been abandoned, oppressed, accused, imprisoned, driven out, mocked, and he takes all of that to the cross so that we all may be made whole in new life. He teaches us that the cross is a place of agony, yes, but also glory, unity and relationship. 
When I am lifted up, he says, from earth, I will draw all people to myself. He loved, and he loved, and he loved, all the way to the end. When I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. Jesus turns the agony of the cross we are headed towards this Lent upside down. This place of torture and derision turns into a place of love, of justice, of transformation and of community for every single one of us, all of us, the children of God. So. If we want to see Jesus, we have to be willing to look at the cross. Yes, Jesus is many things, always. He is a teacher, a healer, a companion and Lord. And we never forget that. But at the centre, the heart of who he is, is the cross, and God's love is revealed there. Our path to seeing Jesus over the next two weeks takes us through betrayal and pain. But in the times of despair, Jesus is always drawing us closer and closer to him, drawing us towards him as he is lifted up for us. The cross is where we are drawn to find Jesus, where we see Jesus on his own terms. We may, like the Greeks, wish to see him, but what we always should remember is he wishes to see us more. He is searching for us far more than we ever search for him. He is always calling us gathering us and loving us. He dies so we do not die. He lives so we live. God loves so we can love. We love because he loves first. We love because the cross draws us towards love. It's power is as compelling as it is mysterious. The cross pulls us towards God and towards each other in a vast and complicated, glorious and holy gathering place. Whether or not we wish to see Jesus, here he is, drawing us to him, drawing us always to that Good Friday loving us, loving us, and loving us all the way to the end. Amen. Claim our faith in the one God known to us in three persons. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. 
He came down from heaven, but was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Remembering that we have a merciful God, we are emboldened to bring our prayers to him with confidence and trust. Let us pray. On this Passion Sunday, as we anticipate the triumph of Easter to come, for the defeat in the, our world of all this is evil, destructive and oppressive, and for the light and love of Christ to break through, let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the one holy Catholic, Catholic and Apostolic Church, for the whole Church of England, remembering particularly our own diocese, Christopher our Bishop, Bishops David and Nicholas, and all our priests, deacons and lay ministers. And with the diocese, remembering Lisa Hughes, who is to be ordained deacon at St Michael's Church Langtoft this afternoon. Let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our For the mission of the Church, and especially that of our own cathedral community, lay and ordained, that in faithful witness we may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, conscious of Christ's command to follow him in servant leadership. Let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those preparing for baptism and confirmation, for their teachers and sponsors, that with them we may remember that your law is written in our hearts, let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, and remembering in particular Myanmar, the Middle East, and all areas where there is a breakdown of civil law or outright war, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our for refugees, prisoners, and hostages, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, and for the homeless, that they may find shelter, let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For grace and courage, to learn from Christ's example of obedience, so that we too may be obedient to his example, seeking always to respond to human need, to work to transform unjust structures in society, and to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation. Let us pray to the Father. 
Lord, in your mercy. For all who have suffered or continue to suffer through this time of pandemic, remembering particularly those who work in the emergency services, the NHS and care sector, those who have no choice but to go out to work, those who have lost their jobs who are in fear of redundancies to come, the lonely, and those who are anxious about sick relatives, that they will find hope and strength to carry on. Let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, especially those known to you alone, or who are known to us, or for whom this community has been asked to pray. Ivor and Gaynor George Jones, Alan Jones, Nick Chambers, Clarissa Turner, Richard Annitz, Catherine Anderson, Adrian Morton, Josephine Price, Robert Bocock, Sophia Valentino, Sheila Blanchard, that they may feel your loving arms around them. Let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, and who have gone before us, and remembering those suffering the pain of bereavement, and those who have died recently, especially those who have died alone or with no one to pray for them, and remembering our own recently departed, Jocelyn Russell, Jennifer Lowther, Mike Brown, that those who have died may rest in peace and rise in glory, and that those who mourn will be comforted. Let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence, with prayer, fasting, and generosity. Accept our Lent and discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Let us pray. Jesus, true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live, let us share your death and passion. Make us perfect in your love. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give thanks, thanks and praise. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that had come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and singing. same way. After supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. 
so that we in the company of Mary the Virgin, Hugh of Lincoln and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty God, for ever and ever. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the Happy are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. If you are worshipping with us elsewhere online, I invite you to make your spiritual communion, praying that by God's grace, united with all the baptised and with Christ who gave his life for us, you may be filled with his indwelling presence.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servants of others, as you were the servant of God, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, prepared for all peoples. Amen. Christ crucified draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.